Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, uh, good evening, depending on the part of the world where you are watching. And I want to welcome you um, to this, um, this first live that goes together with the class number one of the Wake Up Your Eyes uh, uh, free uh, four-part masterclass uh, to which you have probably registered if you are watching this live at this moment. And if you haven't, I would like to invite you to register to this four-part free masterclass here. You have the link clearsightmethod.com slash wake up your eyes. And also um, the information that we are sharing here, but more information as well on natural vision improvement, you can also uh, get it when you sign up to our YouTube channel. Uh -huh. Um, and also if you follow us in Facebook. So I'd like to invite you, if you're watching in, uh, in Facebook or YouTube, to subscribe, to follow us, so that you are uh, sure to get the most out of, uh, of the information that we're sharing and of the experience that we're putting together during these days. And today, um, so uh, a few days ago, I shared, um, I shared the class number one, um, of the Wake Up uh, Your Eyes free course. And in this class, we were sharing a number of ideas. We were talking about the principles, the, some of the underlying principles of natural vision improvement and how and why it is possible to improve your eyesight naturally without surgery, without um, glasses. And uh, well, probably if you watch the video, you already know me. I'm Dr. Ainhoa de Federico and I am a professor and researcher at the University of Toulouse in France. Um, and I've been working with natural vision improvement for over 20 years, doing research at the university, teaching it um, in the Masters of Health Education, uh, where I'm the, the head, the director of the Masters, and doing research for many years. And I also teach in another service at the university called the Free University of Toulouse, um, where professors and researchers share their knowledge with the general public. And usually people who come to these classes are retired people that are uh, 65, uh, 70, 80, 90 sometimes, so older people. And um, they have great success also with, um, with the techniques and the ideas and the methods that I teach. So I've been around working with natural vision improvement for a while. Um, both in person and with students and with research. And since 2016, I started teaching it online, first in Spanish, um, where I founded the first movement, the first online movement of natural vision improvement. And I created the first course in Spanish for natural vision improvement. And since last April, I decided to teach in English as well so that I could reach a broader audience and I could serve more and more people all over the world. So since 2016 that I started working online, it's been over 2 million people in 200 countries that have been watching free classes. I have over 5 million people who've been um, visiting different uh, blog posts and web pages and over 2 million people watching my, my videos on YouTube. And of course, thousands and thousands of students in over 90 countries in Spanish, English, and French. So here I am uh, uh, running the ride, uh, doing the mission of spreading natural vision improvement to as many people as possible, because research exists on natural vision improvement for over 100 years, but a lot of people still don't know that it's possible to improve your eyesight naturally, without glasses, without surgery. And um, research has been carried in many different disciplines. In ophthalmology, of course, but also in optometry, neurophysiology and neurosciences, in um, epigenetics more recently, uh, also in nutrition studies and in posture studies. And uh, even though it may sound a bit uh, surprising, natural vision improvement has also interested the social sciences, social and human sciences like psychology, anthropology, sociology, or history. So in the last century, the amount of research that's been gathered on what factors can make your eyesight go worse, and also what factors can make your eyesight go better, is really enormous. And everything that we can do with our lifestyle, with our habits, and with our practices to take care of our eyes and improve our eyesight, in the same way that every day we take care of our teeth, yeah? Have we all learned uh, how to brush our teeth every day and do it several times a day so that we have good teeth for the rest of our lives? 
well, maybe we haven't yet learned what we can do to take care of our eyes so that we can have a good eyesight for life. And if I ask you the question, what would you rather have when you're older? Would you rather have good teeth or would you rather have good eyes? Probably you want to have both, right? And uh, I do too. Um, but if you've, you are taking every day some time to take care of your teeth, maybe you also want to take a little bit of time every day to take care of your eyes and make sure that you have good eyesight for life. Um, and if you already have problems with your eyesight, um, if you have uh, dry eyes, um, if you see floaters, if you have uh, sensitivity to light or you have eye fatigue uh -huh, or your eyes get irritated um, or you are wearing glasses because you're nearsighted or farsighted or you, near, or you need um, reading glasses after a certain age, well, know that all of these can be corrected. They can be improved. Uh -huh. And if you have um, even um, more um, problems that are more of a degenerative nature, like glaucoma, cataracts, retinal detachment, vitreous detachment, uh, macular degeneration, and others, know that your eyes can also improve. And not only can your eyes improve, if you give them the right stimulation, exercise, nutrition, oxygen, um, humidity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but um, not only can your eyes improve, the state of your eyes can improve. I mean, the cells in your eyes are regenerated every so many days, but also your perception, your experience of seeing can improve because the main organ of your vision are not your eyes. It is your brain. It is your brain that shows you what you see. The eyes are getting the light impulses, but then they, um, so in an eye, um, depending on where the objects are, there's things happening in the eye so that you can focus. And then the lights that are bouncing on objects get into the eye and they have to reach the retina mm -hmm, so that they're gathered with the optic nerve and sent to the brain so that you can see. So you can also optimize what you see by training your brain. Yes, so the, the, the capacities of vision improvement that we have are multiple and we're going to talk about some of them today to expand on what we taught in class number one. So if you haven't seen class number one yet uh, of the four part free masterclass, I again invite you to sign up um, in the link that I have here. And again, um, sign up to our YouTube channel and uh, also you can follow us on Facebook. Yeah, and if you need help um, so that we can um, make it easier for you to get registered in the different places, you can also write to us. Um, to Ainoa at clearsightmethod.com and most likely somebody from the team will support, support you, yeah? And I'm very glad to see uh, that we have over 130 people watching at this moment. This is great. And uh, so let's talk about what we're going to explain in today's class. What are we going to dive into? Well, um, the idea is to talk about the first researcher uh, and the main ideas that this researcher shared, the first researcher that started speaking scientifically about natural vision improvement. And that was an American ophthalmologist, Dr. William Bates, um, who was a very renowned ophthalmologist. Um, if you uh, look for his biography, you will find, for example, that he discovered adrenaline. Mm -hmm the hormone that's produced by the uh, surrenal glands that we, we get a lot of if we feel in danger so that we can uh, fight or flee or hide, uh, yeah, or freeze. So adrenaline was discovered by Dr. William Bates. And uh, later in his career, he started getting interested in um, how it's possible to improve eyesight. He used to say that if glasses would cure your eyes, then over time you would need them less and less. But what happens when you start wearing glasses is the opposite. The moment you start wearing glasses, you need them more and more. And they tend uh, to have higher and higher prescriptions, actually. Visual problems tend to be progressive, especially when you're using glasses. So he was very um, um, bothered by the fact that when he would prescribe glasses uh, for people, they would come back for more. Um, after six months or, or 10 months or so many times, people would not only not have their, eyes, uh, their eyesight problem solved, but they would be in general worse. And um, well, that's the opposite of what we want with a doctor. When you go to see the doctor, you want to cure from whatever um, you have once you've been to the doctor. And besides this, that was already quite frustrating. He had observed um, that uh, people um, 
certain people who had had um, cataract surgery, um, that is people who did not have their crystalline anymore, their natural lens that is within the eye, that up to that moment was believed the only one to participate in the process of focusing, people that didn't have their crystalline lens could nevertheless, some of them, focus near and focus far away. So then he told himself, there must be another focusing mechanism that is participating, because otherwise people without a crystalline could not focus near and far away. So he went and looked at the anatomy of the eye and uh, he, um, he proposed his hypothesis that is one of the main principles on which we base natural vision improvement and that you're going to be working with if you have the aim of improving your eyesight, your vision naturally, and be able to leave glasses behind and as much as possible to avoid surgery for your eyes. So what's the idea? If you look at any, um, any uh, anatomy uh, book uh, look, and, if, and you look how the eye is surrounded by muscles, you will notice, and I'm going to use this model, it's a, it's a balloon, it's a party balloon, and it's uh, flexible because the eye globes are also flexible. They're, full, they're filled with liquid and gel. It's, um, um, they have uh, the aqueous humor that's more or less like water, and they have the vitreous humor that's a kind of a jelly. Uh -huh. So the eye uh, can change shapes. And if you look at any anatomy book, you will notice that um, the eyes are surrounded by four straight muscles that have the function of allowing us to look uh, in different directions. And they are also surrounded by the oblique muscles, like a belt, yeah, that can also change the, the shape of the eye. And so William Bates, um, when he saw all these muscles around the eye, he thought, okay, then uh, maybe these uh, muscles have a participation in focusing. So when the oblique muscles get tense, then the eye has the zoom effect and we can see near, yeah? And when the straight muscles get tense, yeah, the eye gets flat and then we can focus far away. That it's like the wide angle kind of effect, yes, if we compare to a camera. And um, so the idea uh, that focusing de depends on the participation, also depends on the participation of the straight muscles and the oblique muscles, was an idea that was brought by William Bates. And this idea complements uh, the older hypothesis um, that was discovered in um, the 19th century, in 1855, by another ophthalmologist, Hermann von Helmholtz, a German ophthalmologist and physicist, um, who was the one to talk about the role of the crystalline. Yeah? So the crystalline is this natural lens, flexible lens, that we have in the eye. It's behind, the, it's inside, of course, and it's behind um, the iris and the pupil. And this lens is surrounded by a, a sphincter, so a muscle that is round. And this muscle is the ciliary muscle. And when the ciliary muscle gets tense, 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 then the crystalline bends and uh, has uh, bulges up. And then it has a magnifying effect, uh -huh, like a magnifying uh, lens, and you can see small things near. Uh -huh. And when the ciliary muscle relaxes, then the crystalline becomes flat and we can focus far away. So we have these two focusing mechanisms in our eyes and they all depend on muscles, the ciliary muscles, the straight muscles and the oblique muscles. Yeah, And these two focusing um, mechanisms in the eye complement each other. They work together. Yeah, It's a, a little bit as if you wanted to project an image on a wall um, or on a screen. Uh, if you had a projector and you want to uh, show a PowerPoint or pictures that you took or, or a film uh -huh, for a, a watch party at home. Well, there's two ways in which you can make the image be focused and neat on the screen or on the wall. The first mechanism is advancing like the projector, putting it closer or further away uh, to, the, to the wall, to the screen. Yeah. So this would be the equivalent of the uh, participation of the extraocular muscles making the retina and the cornea to be further away or to be near, closer. And the second mechanism in the, in the projection with the screen would be to use this little wheel, yeah, 
that the projector has to fine tune the focusing and have a very sharp and crisp image. So this fine tuning in the eye would be the uh, effect of the crystalline lens, yes? That makes the final adjustment, yeah? Um, but in a healthy eye that has a crystalline and has all its parts, both work together to make uh, the most focused image. So when William Bates developed this idea, this uh, hypothesis, not only it allowed him to understand why certain people who did not have their crystallines anymore because they had had um, cataract surgery, why they could nevertheless still focus near and focus far away. But understanding it like this allowed him also to understand the so-called refractive errors. Myopia or nearsightedness, hyperopia or farsightedness, presbyopia or needing the reading glasses, and astigmatism, which makes that lines and objects appear distorted. So how would Re William Bates explain all of this? Well, a myopic eye, we're told a nearsighted eye, we're told that it's an eye that is too long. But why is it too long? In William Bates' uh, hypothesis and theory, it is because the oblique muscles are exerting tension on the eye. And because of it, the eye stays long. Now, if this tension is constant, if we get um, a, a chronic tension in the muscles, then the eye is always elongated. So guess what? This is a myopic eye. It's an, uh, a nearsighted uh, eye. It's an eye that, because of the tension, can focus near, but because of the tension, cannot get back to the round shape and then focus also far away. Yeah? And uh, so what happens with an eye that is too, uh, too flat? This is described as a hyperopic eye or a farsighted eye. It is the straight muscles that are exerting tension on the, on the eyeball, and so the eyeball is permanently too flat. And because of the tension, if the tension is chronic, the eye cannot get back to being round and to focus near. So this is what makes hyperopia also like a permanent uh, kind of condition. And so astigmatism can be explained by irregular tension in the straight muscles that cause the cornea to have a shape that is not round, uh, like a, a soccer or a basketball ball, but that rather takes the shape of a rugby or American football kind of ball. And so when the cornea makes this distorted shape, then some of the images are um, projected in the retina or before or after, and so lines appear distorted or blurry or even double. So uh, William Bates, Dr. William Bates, was able to explain the most common refractive errors, the problems that most people have in society with their eyesight, being nearsighted, farsighted, having astigmatism or needing reading glasses in terms of tension in the muscles. And so if the cause of these problems is having too much tension in certain groups of muscles, then what is the solution? The solution is relaxation, relaxation for those muscles so that they can again uh, work their way to focus near or far away or whatever they need. Yeah. And um, so in order for us to focus correctly, we need to have our muscles relaxed and trained uh, so that they can do whatever adjustment um, we need. And we can train our muscles in our eyes the same way that we can train our muscles in our fingers to play piano or all of our body to ride a bike or we can practice yoga. All of the muscles in our body, we can train them if we put attention and focus and we practice. Yeah. And um, now to, um, to illustrate this principle of the need of relaxation so that we can focus at different distances, let's do a little experiment, yeah? And I'd like to invite, I have a number of people here with me, so okay, you so can look at all of them. Yeah, we can do this together. How about we all tense our arms? Let's tense our arms, please. Show your arms, Petra, everyone. So, and tense, 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 tense your arms. And while having your arms very, very tense, try to move them. Can you move your arms when they're tense? Nope, it's not possible. Now relax them and try to move them. No problem, yeah? So the same happens with our eyes. If the muscles in our eyes are tense, there's no way they could have a different setting. But if they relax, they can go to focusing far, focus near, they can do whatever, whatever we need. And now I have shown you all the people that are in the room with me. Uh, I have Natalia from Argentina, Pamela from Costa Rica, Petra 
uh, from the Netherlands. Sara is uh, looking at us from Ireland and Isabel from Spain. They have all been uh, students of the ClearSight method and uh, most of them uh, are trained as vision educators to the ClearSight method or are in process of being trained to become vision educators. And I asked them to come and share the screen with me today so that they can also share their experience with practicing the, with the different concepts and techniques and uh, exercises that you are learning at this moment and that you're going to keep learning in the coming uh, days in the free uh, masterclass, Wake Up Your Eyes. Maybe one of you wants to say something before we continue talking about uh, uh, the theories of Bates and, um, and the palming exercise. It's great to relax uh, the eyesight and improve uh, the eyes and improve the eyesight. Isabel, go ahead. So let's have first Isabel. And then Hi, I'm Isabel. Uh, well, I must say that these classes are essential, really. For me, have been very important because I have uh, I have different symptoms, but one of the ones uh, that uh, I was more concerned about was the dry eyes. I couldn't use contact lenses for my short sight. They sticked on my eyes. Uh, I had always to, this sensation in my eyes. Well, with these techniques, <laughs> I have my eyes, uh, well, soft, I, you know, with uh, this water all the time, I don't need any kind of nothing. It's marvelous. It's a marvelous sensation. So just go ahead, try this because palming is for me is marvelous. Really, mm -hmm. <laughs> do it. Don't uh, hesitate. Additionally, I must say that after that, I I improve other symptoms I had. With uh -huh. the course and all this, can, can, I, you, tell, can you tell what I, symptoms you improved? Because well, then you're sure it's I possible had green eyes, so I had light sensibility. Well, now I don't have this problem anymore. I had some stigmatism, which in a few weeks disappeared, and I had also a reading glasses, or at least I needed reading glasses, and though. I didn't want to use them. Mm -hmm. Now I don't need them. <laughs> Yay. So I'm really <laughs> so happy. You have to try this. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. And about my myopia, I'm just about to get rid of it. So <laughs> Go I'm, it. I'm on the way. <laughs> Absolutely. If you've improved so much, you can keep improving. So uh, great. Thanks for sharing. And um, and uh, well, I, I showed you five, six people and they're all in different places. I would love to know also where you're watching us from. We always love to know where you're uh, watching from, where you are from. I saw that there's other people from the Netherlands. Petra, I don't know if you saw it in the comments, but uh, yeah, there's Anki Kjolches from the Netherlands. Yeah, and, and we will love to, to hear where other people are from. Um, you, Petra, also wanted to say something, right? Uh, you, you volunteered, you raised your hand. You're muted, my dear. Put your mic on. There you are. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, good choice to join this live because um, it will improve your whole your whole life, not only your eyes. Well, your eyes are connected to your brain. So if your brain is relaxed uh, while palming, with the palming, your eyes will see better. And if your eyes are happy, you have a calmer state of mind. So, and overall, it's the best choice you can do. If you, if you are at ease, if you are comfortable, you have a better life and uh, you see better colors, you are more at ease. So <laughs> I had dry eyes and uh, with more blinking and the palming, it's, yeah, it's so easy, you know? It's not like, a, it's not very complicated. It's fun and um, yeah, so I can say this, It's fun. <laughs> and, and you will be rewarded too. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Petra. Thank you very much. Okay. So we'll have the occasion to hear the others uh, share about their improvements because some of them have been able uh, to drop their glasses for good, even for driving and have a, 
a, a, a driving license that says that you don't need to wear glasses anymore, but we'll get to those a bit later. Now, um, so we mentioned quickly, so this idea, uh, it's not the only idea that uh, William Bates gave us uh, so that we can improve our eyesight naturally. He was also the first one uh, to mention um, from within ophthalmology because there was already research in Gestalt um, theory in the, this school of perception in, within psychology about visual perception and movement perception, light perception, um, but William Bates was the first within ophthalmology to state that uh, 80 to 90 percent of uh, vision happens in the brain and not in the eyes, and so that the mental aspects and processes are extremely important and how the eyes are so intimately linked to the brain. Um, so, um, but the one thing that we mentioned here was the importance of relaxation so that we can focus because of the role that all these muscles have in our capacity to focus. And uh, um, so if the solution to this chronic tension in the eyes that is causing nearsightedness, farsightedness, needing reading glasses and astigmatism, myopia, hyperopia, presbyopia and astigmatism, then the solution is to relax the eyes. Now, the eyes are the first organ in our body that becomes tense when there's stress in our life, when there, um, yes, we're going to show some exercises in a moment to relax the eyes, Olivera. Uh, just bear with me, be a little bit patient, we're getting there. But what I wanted to, to say is um, that um, the eyes are the first ones to get tense in our body when we are um, exposed to stress or tension or unexpected things. And why? Because we are visual people. 60% uh, of the population is mainly visual, 20% is ma mainly auditory, and 20% is more tactile. So the majority of people are visual, and um, 80 to, yeah, about 80 to 90% of relevant information that we get through the world, uh, from the world, we get it through our eyes. And people say, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. They don't say, if I don't hear it, I don't believe it. Or if I don't touch it, I don't believe it. So we live in a, um, a collective uh, society or collective consciousness um, that um, states that the eyes and eyesight is our main um, sense to connect to the world. So the eyes are the first ones, are the first in line that are exposed to whatever a stimuli that we have around us. And if you notice any horror movie, how is the expression, how are the eyes of the person that's in front of the monster? <laughs> yeah, lots of tension. <laughs> so uh, when uh, you are accumulating tension in your eyes with your daily experiences and you don't do anything on purpose, uh, intentionally to relax the eyes, the eyes keep getting more and more and more and more and more tension over time. And also the eyes do not rest at night. Uh -huh. When you're sleeping and uh, you have this REM, the rapid eye movement phases of, uh, of dreaming and the eyes are still active. And if there's lights in, your, in the place where you sleep, uh, like you have the mobile and it has some light or sometimes people even leave a little light so in case they wake up and go to the bathroom or drink water that there's some light and sometimes we have even modems and computers and things so we live in, in environments where sometimes there's a lot of light at night in our own room so then the eyes do not rest if there's light in the room and the nervous system and the brain do not rest so this is something important take note of this because this is important make sure that you sleep in as uh, in a darkness that is as dark as possible, if possible in complete darkness, so that you can rest your eyes at night, yeah? So this is one thing. And another thing is that the eyes are connected uh, through the fascias to different muscle chains in the body. So if there's tension in your jaws or in your necks or in your shoulders or in your skull or even in your back, it could be also affecting the capacity or the space that your eyes have to relax. And we never, usually we never do anything to relax our eyes, yeah? So it's important to start learning techniques that allow us to relax our eyes. And the first one we're going to talk about, so here I'm coming, uh, I don't remember the name of the person who was asking for it, but here it comes. Uh, the main uh, technique to relax your eyes, it's not the only one, but it's one of the star techniques of natural vision improvement, 
um, that was designed by Dr. Bates himself is palming. And uh, what is palming? We're going to talk about it in a minute. Notice that the technique is called palming. It's not called fingering, which means that you do it with the palms of your hand. It's also not called ha handing. It's called palming. Yeah, so you need to use the palms of your hands for this technique. Yeah, so how do we do it? The idea is that we're going to relax our hands so that if our hands are relaxed, if there's no muscle tension in the hands, or if there is tension in the hands, it will get into the eye. So we want to have uh, relaxed hands. We're going to place them in the shape of a spoon so that we don't make any tension on the eyes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put the palm of the hand around each of the eyes and the fingers will go to the forehead like this, yeah? We make sure that we cover all the space, uh, that there is no light entering, so we keep our eyes open a moment just to verify that we make the best closure so, the, the, uh, so it is as dark as possible and then we close our eyes. Palming is done with eyes closed, is done with your eyes relaxed, they're not moving, with no pressure on your eyes, and of course you remove any contact lenses or glasses before you do palming, yeah? Okay, and also very important as you're doing the palming to uh, make sure that you allow yourself to breathe because if you're pressing on your nose and you cannot breathe, well, um, breathing is also a mechanism of relaxation for the body, so it's really important that you're able to breathe while you're doing the palming. Yeah, so the palms on your eyes, your eyes closed, no contact lenses, no glasses, the capacity of breathing. And the idea is to stay like this a few minutes, as long as it feels comfortable, because that's the best indicator that your body is happy with what you're doing and it's taking it in. And, um, and this is very relaxing for the eyes. Now, why is this relaxing for the eyes? There's at least two layers. One layer is the darkness. When your eyes are in darkness, mm -hmm, the nervous system, the nervous, uh, the optical nerve, the retina, the brain can relax. That's part of the mental relaxation, darkness. And that's why you also want it at night. But there is another reason, and that is at least another reason. There are more, but we'll get into them progressively. And that reason is that your hands have heat. And so the heat of your hands can relax the muscles in your eyes, yeah? Now, you've noticed if you are keeping your arms up, you probably are getting tired, like the, the, the arms are getting tired. So you could put a stack of things on your table, books or a cushion or something, so that you can put your elbows on something so that your arms can relax as well while you do the palming. And then you can even lean a little bit uh, your head on your hands without making any pressure. And in this way, this, um, this position is a lot more relaxing. It's relaxing for the eyes, for the head, but also for the arms and the shoulders. Yeah, so it's a better position. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further, you can also tweak this posture and do it in what I call the thinker's position. And why do I call it the thinker's position? Because it's kind of similar to Rodin's a sculpture, but not quite. So in this way, it helps you remember. So for this position, um, you're going to unbutton your pants so that you allow your abdomen, um, you allow your, your belly uh, to be able to breathe. Let me show it a little bit more. Yeah, there. So your pants should be unbuttoned so that there's no pressure on your belly. And this way you can have a deeper abdominal breathing that is also very relaxing for uh, all your body. And you're going to put um, your, um, okay, I cannot turn the computer more, but you'll have to believe me. So you're, you have, will put your uh, elbows on your knees, yeah? And in this way, um, you can rest your, your head on your hands, your eyes closed, and then your shoulders and your back are completely relaxed and your head too, because the head is resting on the hands that are resting on the elbows, that are resting on the knees, that are resting on the feet. So we are kind of reproducing the structures of Gothic cathedrals, yeah, that kept all the weight. Um, and this is a very, very relaxing position for palming, yeah? When can you do this kind of palming? Well, maybe you can do it just before going to bed. And doing this palming in the thinker's position before going to bed is amazing because then you relax your eyes 
just before the amount of hours that you're going to sleep. So all this relaxation is carried on through several hours, and so you wake up refreshed uh -huh, um, with your eyes in a much better state. Yeah. Um, if you want to do palming in bed, you can also do it laying in bed. You lay in bed, you put a, a cushion on your, uh, on your chest so that it can hold your elbows, or you can put uh, some um, um, foulard, something to hold your, um, or a yoga string so that your elbows don't go to the sides and then they don't fall to the sides. So these are some of the basic settings uh, for doing palming. And since I released the video number one, class number one, I've been receiving a number of questions also on palming. So let me dive into those because maybe you have, um, yeah, you are also wondering about these things. So a lot of people ask, uh, is palming done with eyes open or closed? Closed eyes. Uh -huh. No glasses, no contact lenses, closed eyes. Um, and can, um, yeah, do you have to move your eyes during palming? Well, the idea is to relax them. So in principle, no. Some people are asking if uh, what's the difference between palming or just laying in bed uh, in a dark room? Well, the difference is that when you're having your hands on your eyes, you make the darkness darker and you are also relaxing your eyes because of the heat of your hands. Uh -huh. Also, in different traditions, they say that um, in the palms, there are secondary energy centers. And so you're sending yourself energy that has other uh, beneficial properties to your eyes. Dr. William Bates compared actually uh, doing palming with your hands compared to wearing masks or putting a dark piece of cloth around the eyes. And he noticed that palming was a lot more effective than just wearing a mask in the darkness or wearing uh, some black piece of cloth. Um, so, yeah, the idea is not to let any light get into the, into the eyes while you're palming so that you can relax more. And you can, of course, um, you can, of course, do palming um, with uh, a relaxing music. And if you're doing palming, you can also think of affirmations um, uh, that are reinforcing the idea that you are going to see better and better. Or you can do some visualization and imagine and remember clear sight. You can, for example, remember a period in your life when you were seeing very, very well or remember a happy memory of your life. And if you're doing this while you're doing palming, um, it is going to be beneficial as well. Some people are asking how many times a day um, can we do palming and for how long? And the idea is to do palming as many times as you want, as often as you think about it. Even if you do it for a minute or two, you will notice the difference. So for example, um, if you're working at the computer, uh, most of the day, you could set an alarm to stop every hour and uh, get up, stretch, go to the window, look far, uh, drink a glass of water, maybe go to the toilet, and you can do a couple of minutes of palming. You can do it at your desk or you can do it in the toilet as well, Yeah, depending on if you want to be seen or not when you're doing palming. But you can do palming as many times as you remember. Uh -huh. Now, if you're going to do it only once a day, then do it just before going to bed because then you will profit from all the hours that you are sleeping to relax your eyes as well. And for how long? Well, you can stay as long as it feels comfortable. And uh, some people like doing a palming intensives and spend half an hour or, or an hour palming. Um, but if you want, you can do that, except if you have glaucoma. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to do one hour or half an hour of palming. If you're doing five minutes, ten minutes here and there, uh, it's okay. Now, I did send a warning about glaucoma. Uh, if you have glaucoma, it would be uh, best to do palming only for five minutes. You can do it several times a day. You can do it as many times as you want, but each sequence only five minutes. And why? Because with the heat that you get from palming, um, the aqueous humor uh, will expand, liquids get bigger with heat and, uh, and they get smaller with cold. And um, then it could, it could um, make um, yeah, the, the intraocular pressure a little bit worse. So if you have glaucoma, only do it for five minutes and then stop 
yeah and then you can do it five minutes again later and it will help you if you keep it short uh, most people don't have glaucoma, so you can go ahead and do palming as long as you want and you'll be all right with it. Now, if you have retinal detachment or vitreous detachment, you will want to avoid the position with your head going down um, or glaucoma. But in all the other situations, all the other occasions, and most people don't have these three things, uh, really doing palming in the thinker's position is the most relaxing kind of palming. <clears throat> Okay, the breathing, affirmations, visualizations. Okay, you should do palming with no pressure whatsoever on the on the face. Yeah, and you can do it. Um, yeah, as many times as you want. Some people are asking, do I uh, have to keep continuing doing palming over time? I would suggest yes. The same way as you don't brush your teeth. Uh, like in the first three, few weeks that you're learning how to take care of your teeth, you keep doing it the rest of the time, right? So with palming, I would, I would advise that you do palming every day a little bit, um, at least. And uh, you're going to learn other practices from tomorrow on. Tomorrow we're going to release the class number two and we'll dive into other practices of a different nature. And I advise that you always finish your sequences of natural vision improvement with palming make it the last practice, the last exercise that you do. You can use palming also with one hand, like if you have, uh, for some reason, uh, a problem with one arm or, or one hand is missing, you can do it alternatively. You keep your eyes closed and you move the hand from one eye to the other. And palming is good for any kind of eye symptom you may have. If you have... Um, um, sensitivity to light or dry eye or humid eye or um, um, floaters or eye fatigue, for all of those, palming is very good. Palming is also very good if you have amblyopia, strabismus, if you're nearsighted or farsighted or if you have presbyopia or astigmatism, do palming. But also if you have glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, etc., etc., Palming is really one of the basic main uh, practices of natural vision improvement. And uh, it is a basic that will improve the state of the eye and the functioning of the eye. Natalia, can I invite you to join in as we're talking about benefits of palming? Yeah. So um, <laughs> you need to put your mic on. We cannot hear you yet. So Natalia has been, been trained as a natural vision educator with me in uh, the ClearSight method, also in visual yoga with our friend and colleague Teresa Pellejero and also in the Argentinian School of um, uh, Holistic Vision, Octoporver. So she has three certifications as a, <laughs> as a vision educator. And um, yeah, so um, what can we say more about palming and its benefits for all kinds of symptoms and situations? <laughs> You have to get in love of palming. It's a so, so, so important exercise. And I love to, to practice it always with or a meditation or listening to music that I love or thinking on affirmations, as you said. We have to use the, the palming time also, not only for our, for our eyes, but also for ourselves. And so we, we create like a, an atmosphere that it's, perfect for, for us. So try palming and get in love of palming because it's a so simple technique, extremely simple technique, but it is so powerful. Uh -huh. Yes, and you don't need anything external of yourself to be able to practice it. You don't need to buy anything or get any material ready. You just need your hands and a sitting position or a laying position, and that's it. So it's very easy to practice anytime. And it really is a basic. It really sets up the conditions so that your vision can improve more and more, further and further. Our eyes need oxygen. They need to be humid. And we'll talk about this. Palming also helps the, the eyes be, to be humid. They need to be relaxed. They need to be detoxified. And they need to be well nourished. And if you're giving those things to your eyes, then you're your physiology and your anatomy will get better and better and their eyes will, will work better and better. So palming also helps to have uh, wet, humid eyes, right? Exactly. And it is said that our palm has the size to put it in our face. So uh, on 
we near our eyes. So it is the perfect size for palming our own hands. Exactly, exactly. It's the best tool that we can use for this. Yes. And uh, before we go on a little bit more, Natalia, would you like to tell your experience also with the ClearSight method and what it's done to change your, your, your life, actually? Tell us a little bit about it. I am so, so thankful to this method, really. I wore permanent glasses for 40 years, from two years old to 42 years old in, in a permanent way. I was uh, diagnosed with hyperopia, astigmatism, strabismus, dry eye, photophobia, many things. And now you can see me here uh, with my naked eyes and see him very well. I, I am not going to say that perfectly, but uh, there is a, a really big thing that I achieve and uh, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of, of having heard my own needs. But now my, my driving license says that I am able to drive without any glasses. So for a person that uh, grew up wearing permanent glasses and, and knowing that I was going to, to need them for all my life, being able to have that uh, driving license now, now is, it is very, something that makes me very proud of. Absolutely. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. And uh, maybe we can uh, share some more, uh, some more techniques also, because palming is a, an absolute fundamental uh, to be able to relax your eyes and to set up the conditions for all the other exercises and improvements, to set up the relaxation that we need also, not just for our eyes, but for our whole body. But there are other simple and fun techniques and practices that we can do uh, to improve our eyesight. For example, yesterday we did this in Spanish and you had a few ideas, so you may want to share a little bit. Yes, let's start for one thing, very simple thing that we are always using, but not in, a, in a, the frequency that we would need. That is blinking. More simple than blinking, there is nothing, I think. But just to try to blink a little bit faster is uh, very good for our eyes because they are going to uh, avoid a dry eye. Absolutely. Uh, blinking um, uh, regulates the humidity in the eye because blinking stimulates uh, the glands that are producing the substance contained in tears. So as we are blinking, more, um, more tears are produced, they are distributed on the eye, they are cleaning the eye from uh, whatever dust or whatever is there, uh, they're also creating um, a thin layer of water on the cornea, making it uh, more perfect for focusing. And also every time we blink, there's a moment where we have our eyes closed, so our nervous system can rest, and our focusing can rest, our muscles can rest, and when we open our eyes, they adjust again. So blinking has many, many good properties. And um, uh, you can do an experiment also to see for yourself because we are here sharing ideas with you and practices, but you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe us. I, I would suggest that you follow my advice, but so that you can verify with your own eyes. Don't believe me. Practice and choose and decide and know for yourself what works and how it works for you. So with blinking, I'd like to suggest the following practice. Um, take uh, um, um, some, um, how do you call those? Um, yeah, timer. these devices, yeah, a timer, uh, and set the timer up for a minute and turn it on and try to be without blinking for a minute. And you will notice that it is extremely difficult and that your eyes start burning. And I, I couldn't do it for any more than seven seconds. And I refuse. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know people that can stay for 10 seconds, but then their eyes are like burning and dry and it's very, very uncomfortable. So you notice that not blinking is really bad for you. Now you can set the timer for another minute and you can do this with somebody else looking at each other and you do it with the other person and you're just observing each other and counting the amount of times that the other person is blinking, yeah, naturally, spontaneously. And then you can tell each other at the end of the minute. So each of you have awareness of how much or how little you're blinking. 
And then you can try a third minute again for one minute. Uh -huh. And this time you're going to blink every two seconds, two, three seconds, so that you notice how your eyes feel if you're blinking regularly, probably more than what you're doing. And you'll notice the difference between the three experiences and you can see for yourself with your own eyes how you feel better. And then from that moment on, you'll probably notice that actually your eyes feel much better when you're blinking more often. And so you can bring awareness to your eyes frequently to remember to blink. But that's a practice that doesn't require that you set up an hour of practice in your schedule and you stop everything else. No, it's just about remembering every now and then to pay attention at your eyes so that you blink that you blink more often. And this is particularly important for people who spend a lot of time at the computer because when we are looking at the computer, we tend to forget to blink even more. Uh -huh. We're hypnotized by the screen. And so you could put a post-it on your, on your screen someplace that says, blink, breathe. <laughs> yeah, and this way, oh yeah, the timer was on. And this way you remind yourself to blink. Now, um, Pamela, can I invite you to come in? Yes, yeah. So we have Pamela, you can put your mic on. Pamela is also a certified vision educator and she's certified in the clear sight method and she's also taken the course of the Spanish uh, Bates method uh, certification. So she's certified also twice or three times uh, with visual yoga also with uh, Teresa Pellejero. And uh, maybe Pamela, you want to share, thank you, thank you, Natalia, we say bye for now. Maybe you want to share what happened uh, with you, with your eyesight and your vision and what you've left behind. And then we'll explain a few more practices together. Yeah. Sure. Sure, I know. Uh, first, thank you very much for letting me be here. Uh, it's a pleasure for me and honor to, to share a little, bit me, a little bit of my journey in my uh, improvement in vision. So I used to wear glasses for nearsightedness and astigmatism. Uh, I used it for almost 18 uh, years. And I, so I, I started to feel in that I was, I don't want to use it anymore, glasses. I don't know, something in myself, inside of me, tell me that have to be another option, right? Uh, so I discovered uh, this course that is the, the exactly the, the first course of clear sight method. I enrolled the course and uh, my life started to change a lot. So I, after that, I enrolled to the to be a vision educator with you, and uh, so it has been an amazing experience uh, for me. So I'm not using any more classes. Uh, almost one year ago, <laughs> I I feel better. I can drive without glasses. I can do a sport because I love to do sports. And uh, previous to that, for me, was a barrier uh, because if I want to run or working or something, I could not enjoy the nature and could not enjoy the, the environment because I need my I, at that moment. I was needing my glasses. So after that, my life changed uh, a lot. So, uh, Thank you for sharing this. And uh, I hear a lot of people who say things similar to what you mentioned, like uh, Natalia was mentioning the pleasure to be able to drive without glasses, but a lot other people discover that now they can play sports or they can ride their motorbike. Sometimes if you have glasses, you cannot wear the helmet. So, uh, or some people yeah. can play an instrument or they have more pleasure because they can read um, the menu in a restaurant in the evening with dim candle lights and they feel so empowered and free to be able to do so. Or more day-to-day -day things like shopping at the supermarket with the poor lights in the evening um, or reading your text in the mobile. And of course, enjoying nature, colors, birds, trees, all the shades of colors and, and, the, and the volumes and the three dimensions. And we also have some uh, friends now, I think we could call her friend, uh, Milos, who's a painter, for example. And uh, mm -hmm. she had started uh, having vision problems and seeing doubles, so she couldn't paint anymore. And now she's back into being able to paint all the details. And even uh, a few days ago, she told us that she had won a prize being able to get back to painting. So uh, yeah, there's many, many, so many things that, uh, 
that you can improve in your in your life, even more practical things like being able to wash the dishes <laughs> faster yes. and recognizing things and not cutting yourself. Um, but yeah, life improves so much when you have a good eyesight. Also, that you can recognize your friends in the street or see the expression of your beloved people without having the barrier of the glasses. I, I love it when I hear um, older women that have grandchildren say that they love being able to look at the expressions of the, their grandchildren. And all of this is a lot of joy that you can give yourself, um, improving your eyesight naturally. And it all starts with farming. And it's so easy. It's so simple. Um, and you can do it anytime, as much as you want. And it's really, really helpful. Um, so we talked about Natalia. We talked with Natalia about blinking as well. But maybe we can give a few other recommendations that are from this physical level, like uh, yawning or looking far or looking stretching. far. Yes, right. that's what I want to to talk because I'm a person that I uh, I work several hours at, at the computer uh, in my daily base. So I try to look far because when we look near in the screen, the majority of the time, so our our eyes and the muscles of the eyes are uh, doing an effort to, yeah. to exactly, to see uh, near. So uh, time to time, I re highly recommend to the, the people that uh, change and looking far. Uh, no matter if your room is small, but uh, look the far as you can, as small far as you can. Could be the door, could be, I don't know, uh, a picture or something that you can have in your room, but switch from near to far as much as you can. That's Absolutely. one of the things. Absolutely. Um, the resting position for the eye where there is no tension in any muscle in the eye is looking far away. Uh -huh. And uh, with the development of our civilization, I mean, if we think about thousands of years ago when people were hunters uh -huh, and gatherers, well, they were looking out uh, not to be eaten by lions or eagles or predators. So they had to be aware of, of the environment far away. And they could look at the, uh, the climatic conditions and the clouds to see if it was going to rain or not. And maybe look at the stars to orient where they were going. Um, and of course, sometimes they would uh, like cook or, or, or make their clothes. And that was more near, um, uh, near looking near work. But if they were also going to gather fruits in the trees, that was... so they spent a lot more time outdoors and looking far away. And if we look how we live nowadays, we are reading or looking at a screen or another screen. Yeah, the, the telephone or the tablet or the computer or the TV or the book. And otherwise we're indoors or in our houses, some have space, but a lot of people don't necessarily have a lot of space. So when we are indoors, we tend to spend most of the time looking near less than six meters or uh, or 20 feet so the idea is as much as possible try to yeah when you're in your car for example roll the window down if it's not too cold if the weather is okay uh, i know it depends whether in, you're in the north hemisphere or the south hemisphere or near the equator and what season of the year you are now but if it's possible roll your window down and make sure that you look out the window when you're in the car yeah if you're driving or if you're in the other passenger seat. And uh, if, you are, if you're working at a computer, try to have the computer near a window, open or closed, but try to look far away as often as you can every now and then so that you can rest your eyes. Yes, exactly. Yes. I have one over there. So I'm constantly yeah, looking to the side. Yeah. <laughs> and this way you can relax your eyes. You, as, as Pamela said, change the distance of what you're focusing at sometimes near, sometimes far. And if you don't have a window, like Pamela said, put something interesting in the furthest wall, in the furthest corner, so that every now and then you're looking above your computer and that you can look at those things. That's really helpful for the eyes. It, it helps them relax. And it's also helping correct presbyopia and cataracts and other refractive symptoms. So great. Um, yeah, and we could also talk about the importance of stretching and yawning. So stretching so that we don't have tensions in our muscles and yawning so that we can have, yeah, the neck, uh -huh, everything you can do to move uh, a little bit and uh, make sure that your body is uh, comfortable. Even if it's, it's small movements, it helps the fascia release. 
that's very, very good. And, um, and also yawning, yawning and laughing. Uh, why are yawning and laughing so useful? Well, when we do this kind of movement, our, oh. our eyes, exactly. <laughs> well, in my case, I start to feel more uh, my eyes with more humidity. So, humidity, yeah, they're more humidity. Humid, yeah. yeah, so for me, it's, it's, help, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. Laughing and yawning relax all the muscles in the face. They tend to generate more humidity for the eyes, uh, like Pamela said. And um, also yawning brings in a lot more oxygen into the body. Uh, so it's very, very good for general relaxation and oxygenation. And in many cultures, we are told not to yawn with our uh, mouth big open in front of someone. Um, but um, if you want to have good eyesight, it's good to do it. So maybe you can put, like Isabel was showing, you can put your hand in front of your yawning or you can move around, I mean, go someplace else so that you can yawn. But yawning is really, really a good thing uh, for to keep a very good eyesight, yeah? So you see, there are very easy things. Look far, blink, laugh, yawn, breathe, uh -huh, stretch. And uh, at the same time as we are uh, advising you to, um, to laugh, um, also, if you want to cry, it's good to do it. Because crying, uh, well, the eyes have two functions, seeing and crying. If you inhibit one of them, the other one works less well as well. So if you keep yourself from crying, it will also keep yourself from seeing clearly. And yeah, sometimes we're in situations where we don't want to be seen crying. Uh, so we don't have to do it in public if we don't want, but we can, bathrooms are very useful. We can go to the bathroom and do it there or find a, a private space to do it or, or, or someone with whom we can cry. But it's important to let all the functions of the eye uh, to, to function correctly. And so we'll talk more about emotions and the implication of emotions with eyesight in a few days. But I just dropped this idea because that's something you can start allowing yourself to do and to happen. Would you like to add something else before we move on to a few more things? No, it's okay. Thank you, Ainoa, for the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing the space with us and sharing also your experience. And we also have Sarah from Ireland. Would you like to share also about your experience with uh, natural vision improvement and the clear sight method and, uh, and palming and what we're teaching at this moment? Yes, of course. Um... Hi, everybody. It's a bit overwhelming to see everybody. That is, uh, we have a lot of people. Over from 200 people now. It's <laughs> from all over the world, and it's like, wow. Um, so in my case, I've been wearing glasses uh, for a short uh, sightness for 21 years, and, and, and as well astigmatism. <laughs> And uh, finding that course was uh, a big surprise and uh, a, a very good one. Just doing palming and the different uh, tips that they were they are providing, my my actual life has changed. So I'm not wearing glasses anymore, even though I'm in the process of leaving my uh, short sightedness behind. I'm not uh, wearing glasses, I'm not wearing sunglasses. So I left behind my uh, dry eyes, my... Uh, you call it uh, light sensibility and uh, I'm more relaxed so I'm not so much in control of, or trying to be in control of everything so I have time for other things and even to play with my kids you know and it, it's, am it's amazing it's amazing the 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 not 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 only uh, my my eyes are stronger and and healthy <clears throat> It has changed other part of my of my actual life because I, I put my my mind in other things as well, you know. So just just the, the part of the relaxation thing has improved a lot in my case, and I believe in 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 any other uh, uh, colleagues that are um, sharing the the, the course, uh, uh, they are feeling the same as me. Yeah, and uh, speaking of which, because you've seen here people who have left behind um, 
myopia and hyperopia or nearsightedness and farsightedness that have left behind presbyopia or the need of reading glasses that have left behind um, um, strabismus and bleopia, but also dry eye or sensitivity to light or floaters. But there's a lot more participants of the clear sight method that are not here today, but we know so many that have avoided um, cataract surgery or keratoconus surgery, like a transplant of the cornea, that have improved their campimetry, having macular degeneration or having glaucoma. So their retina is seeing better now than it was seeing before. Um, so there's uh, we've, uh, people canceling surgeries for cataracts. We, we've seen so many participants improving so, so much. And yeah. again, it all starts with palming. It's some palming, blinking, breathing, looking far, laughing, very simple things that you can do to mm. take care of your eyesight. And mm -hmm. You can do it also when you brush your teeth. If you're brushing your teeth, well, you already remember that you're taking care of yourself, so you can move on into doing the other practices for vision improvement. If you have any ritual of self-care, just add a few minutes of um, of this. Palming, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, anything you'd like to add? Otherwise, I'll, I'll add a few more information that's useful. Go ahead. Well, for me, a big thing now is happening uh, in. Uh, in, in relation to my sight is that uh, I am about to change my my uh, receipt, how, how you call it, the dioptrisa? Uh, uh, degrees. The degrees on, on, on my glasses because I cannot wear my old ones. It's, it's my, my eyes get very tired and very tense. So I'm very happy about it. That's, that's a, big, a big thing for me. So it means mm -hmm. that I'm improving a lot, mm -hmm. my sight, so. Great. It's for me. Yupi, so congratulations. Wait, I've lost, I was looking into the questions to answer and I lost you. <laughs> but really, really happy for you. Great, very good. Okay, I see that there's a few more questions that I'd like to answer. And um, so um, some people are asking me um, if, um, so what do they do with their glasses? And uh, the idea, if you want to improve your eyesight, if you want to improve your vision without glasses or surgery, if you're starting this process of natural vision improvement, the idea is that from now on, you spend as much time as possible without glasses, as much time as reasonably possible without glasses. And I insist on the reasonably because you've heard Natalia, she doesn't need glasses to drive anymore. But she achieved that point after several weeks, maybe months of practicing. It was not the first day, yeah? So I don't want any of you doing crazy stuff and putting yourself in danger or putting other people in danger. Please, let's all use common sense. If for now you need glasses to drive, keep using them. If you need glasses to work at the computer or if you need glasses to do some specific things, for now, use them. But you're going to notice day by day uh, that you probably are able to do more and more things without using glasses. And I advise you to have a notebook where you're going to write every day everything that you are able to, to do without glasses. And you'll see over time how the number of activities that you're capable of doing without glasses increases over time. And it's good to keep tracking. For example, maybe in the beginning, uh, well, I know people that even take their shower without glasses. Maybe you can remove the glasses when you're in the shower. Or once you are sitting at the table and your food is served, you, don't, you know what's in the dish. You don't need to see every little piece of rice or beans that you're putting in your mouth. You already know what's in the plate. So you can just eat without the glasses. And you'll, you'll see how every day there's more and more things that you can do without glasses. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to release another lesson where we will teach more information about false beliefs that there are there about eyesight, uh, the belief that eye problems are genetic or that they can only get worse with, uh, with age uh, or the belief that sun is bad for your eyes and many others. So we're going to review those and we're going to teach more things also in our relation with sunlight because I see that also there's people asking about sun. And there's going to be a lot of information about sun from tomorrow on. For now, I, want, I wanted to go deeper into things connected with palming and improving your eyesight with very simple uh, practices and techniques at the physical level. Now, another thing that you may notice as you are practicing palming and you're wearing your glasses less and less, you may notice 
strange sensations in your eyes uh -huh, that some people sometimes call it having a tired eyes or fatigue, but usually they're confusing, they're mixing up relaxation with being tired. When we are so used in, to being tense and in an effort all the time, when we start relaxing, sometimes we mix it up with being tired because sometimes people, the only moment where they relax is when they're absolutely super tired and that's when they let go. So you may have some sensations uh, that are unusual around your eyes. You may have some headache and you may have even some nausea. If you're having these sensations, know that they're precisely indicators that there are adjustments that are happening in your visual system, in your eyes, uh -huh, in your fascias, etc., and that your body is doing the necessary so that you can see better and better. Okay, they may be a little bit uncomfortable, and when they come, well, you may want to do palming or, or something relaxing or take a bath to help, but take those signs as something that's telling you that you're actually improving your eyesight, that your vision is improving. <clears throat> okay, let me have a quick look. Um, so, and I see some people are asking, um, so should you remain upright when palming with epiretinal membrane? You can do it any position you want in that case. Um, so we already mentioned about sunshine, Elena de Souza. We, we will talk more about sun, sunshine tomorrow in the next class that you're going to receive through email. If you haven't yet signed up to receive all our emails with all our free classes, register to the four-part free masterclass with this link. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you confirm your email so that you get everything. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So um, Margaret's asking, I have a dropping lid on my lower right eye. What exercises will, will help? Also blurry vision in the left eye. What exercises will help? Well, Margaret, palming will also help. Also, uh, Nevin, for uveitis, it will help. Yeah, and for macular degeneration, retinopathy, uh, surendra, meta, it will also help. Palming is a basic. You need to do palming. We're going to be teaching more exercises, Margaret. Uh, so you will learn in the subsequent lessons more things that you can do. Uh -huh. but, um, but definitely palming and the techniques that we've been uh, mentioning today are helpful for all these conditions. And if you have vision problems, um, Surendra, due to diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes, for example, well, we can help here for your eyesight and vision, but it would be important also that you take care of the diabetes. Uh, I know a, a couple of, um, uh, he's a doctor and she's a health coach, and they have found also natural uh, methods and techniques um, to revert type 2 diabetes. So it is also possible to improve diabetes naturally, but that's not my work, that's, that's theirs. Now, if the vision problems come from that, it's important that you take care of the diabetes as well as the vision practices that we're teaching here. Okay, well, um, these are more or less the questions I see um, around. I know that the team's been answering to questions. And uh, of course, there will be more occasions to talk about and go deeper on more aspects of natural vision improvement. And watch out for tomorrow's class, because again, in tomorrow's class, we're going to teach the second super fundamental technique, one of the stars of natural vision improvement. And with tomorrow's technique, you are going to see how your ability to focus increases amazingly, impressively, just practicing a few minutes. You'll be able to see smaller print, to see further away. You'll increase your focus capacity very, very quickly um, using this very special technique that I'm teaching tomorrow. We're even going to provide you with um, um, an eye chart with small print so that you can verify with that as a point of reference how much your eyesight improves with tomorrow's technique. So uh, my encouragement for you is to keep practicing the techniques we've mentioned um, and that you attend, that you watch for tomorrow's email and um, the opening of lesson number two. You will receive it in the morning um, and um, you'll be able to watch it anytime you want because it's recorded. So keep practicing, palming, learn tomorrow's techniques so that you can increase your focus capacity within minutes of practice and we'll keep uh, releasing more and more free exercises and techniques and information so that you can keep improving your eyesight naturally. 
So take care, watch out for tomorrow's lesson, enjoy the beauty of life, and I'll see you very, very soon. I'll see you more and I'll see you better. Bye-bye and thank you everyone who is here, everyone from the team of Albera Claro, all the people who came today to speak with you, and of course, each of you who are watching. Again, practice and I'll see you more and I'll see you better. Bye-bye. <laughs>